Hi everyone, Mireille Thériault, non-toxic lifestyle coach and the founder of Rustic Health. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am chatting with life coach Meredith Driscoll and we are talking all about overcoming hardship, trauma and pain, and also how to create your life consciously and to become successful. Now we cover a wide range of topics in this video, including non-toxic living. This video is part of a series I'm doing where I feature people who inspire me and who I think will also inspire you. So if you like these videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. Hello, Meredith. Thank you so much for being here. I'm super excited to have you. Can you start by telling us a bit about who you are, what you do, and what led you down the path to what you're doing? Yeah, sure. And thank you for having me. I'm really excited. So I'm Meredith Driscoll. I'm a life coach. I focus on mindset work and manifestation. I have added many tools to my tool belt along the way. So I don't just do mindset work. I also am a Reiki practitioner. I'm getting certified in something called trauma release exercise, which is body work. And, and I use human design a lot as well, but I, I mostly work with women that struggle with anxiety and know that they were meant for more. They're, they're meant for more than the life that they're living right now. And I help them basically get out of their own way and, and make the changes that they need to, to really, truly enjoy their lives. That's awesome. That's amazing work you're doing and stuff. Can you mm -hmm. talk a bit more about what led you to do maybe more of the trauma part, the body work <laughs> stuff? I know you have a big story. We've talked before, yeah. so I know that uh, you have some history there. So maybe give us, you know, what you're comfortable talking about. Give us a bit of background. What led to that? Sure. Well, I have had quite uh, an interesting life so far. Um, when I was 17, I was hit by a semi truck. Uh, I had a back surgery when I was 19. Basically, for half of my life, I have been um, in debilitating pain, and there were consistent periods of time where I could not function on a regular basis, like had to have, you know, be carried to the bathroom kind of thing. Um, and I just had accepted pain and, and back problems as a part of my life for so long. I really... Uh, I mean, if you've been in extreme pain for, for extended amounts of time, it does a number to your nervous system and to your mindset. And um, it, it, was, it was really hard to live that way. And, but I accepted it. I just accepted it that it was just a normal part of my reality. And uh, along the way, let's see, I, I started my entrepreneurial journey when I was 22. Um, I landed a $6 million investor. I lost the investor. They backed out. So, you know, I'm like on this path, I'm, you know, in pain and all the time and everything, but I'm on this path. I have like this business that's doing really well and I've got this huge investor and my, all of my dreams are about to come true. And then the investor backed out. And then six months later, I found out that I was pregnant and my fiance and I were not supposed to be able to have children. So this was an utter shock and um, <laughs> cue the anxiety, right? <laughs> I didn't know who I was anymore. You know, my, my whole purpose in life, I thought was to run this business and to, to be the successful entrepreneur in the music industry. And, and I, all of a sudden that was ripped away from me and I didn't know what I was doing anymore if I didn't have that. And now I'm a, supposed to be a mom, which I was never supposed to be. It was not a part of my plan. So I uh, felt like I had lost myself, definitely. Also, something that we didn't talk about, but since we're gonna talk about the trauma release, trigger warning, uh, I was sexually assaulted. I was raped in Prague when I was backpacking Europe in 2009. And uh, obviously that had a lot of emotional influence on my life and a lot of healing was required from that and as much as I had done work around healing uh, it was still a trigger for me it was still something that I couldn't talk about it definitely affected my sense of worth so like all of these all of these factors combined after I had my child I started having anxiety attacks on a regular basis. I just, I mean, between like my back and not being able to function physically and then the anxiety and not be able to, to really function emotionally and, and from a mentally healthy perspective, uh, <laughs> I just hit rock bottom. I had this like epiphany moment right before New Year's in 2018 or it right before 2018 New Year's, um, that I was running my head into a wall just trying to figure out how to become happier, become successful, to change my family's financial situation, just to, to, you know, not be in pain all of the time. And I realized that I had just accepted all of these things and I was 
basically living out the definition of insanity. I wasn't making any changes and I was hoping for different results. And so I threw myself into research, into, I just started with, you know, Googling the most successful people and what their habits are. And every single one of them had a mindset practice. They had, uh, they did energy work. You know, they were, they were consciously creating their life where I, I believe that we're all creators. We create our reality. And if you are not consciously creating that reality, then you really um, stand a chance to, to not be happy with it. So, I mean, it's really easy to tell if you're consciously creating or not. Like, are you happy with your life? <laughs> a lot of us don't even ask ourselves that question though. It's, it's kind of, right, it's like an obvious thing you would think, but yeah, to just stop and ask yourself that, that's right there, a big awareness thing. Awareness is everything. Yeah. So that's how I got into it. I was miserable. I'd hit rock bottom emotionally, physically, spiritually. Um, I knew that my current path was untenable and it really just got to a point where it was like, okay, I have to commit myself or I have to make massive changes on my own. So I gave one last ditch effort to do it on my own. And I did, I changed my entire life in five months, literally. Um, it didn't look the same at all. I manifested healing on every single level. Um, I, I fell back in love with the law of attraction, which I know a lot of people here in the spiritual community again take issue with it because they think it's like you know, oh, you're you're you have to stay high vibe all the time in order to be able to manifest things, and it gets accused of like spiritual bypassing a lot. I personally love it because it shone a light on all of the areas that I did need to heal mm-hmm. whenever those came up. And so when those came up, I was. I I took, I hit it head on and I just went straight into it. And I was like, okay, I've got to heal this. And I found the tools and modalities to be able to do that. And just because I changed my life so drastically and feel like such a a different human being. And I'm, I'm so grateful for the massive transformation that my life has had that I I knew that that was my purpose. I had to teach other people and empower other people to do the same thing. For sure. So what are some of the tools that you would say you would have used for healing? So a lot of people listening or watching this are, you know, on a non-toxic lifestyle journey. So they're looking at things that um, either are more natural, connected with nature, or even just stuff that maybe a bit more um, alternative, less conventional. Are there any modalities related to that that you you would have explored either through your your healing through your pain, your physical pain journey, and or your emotional um, journey? Anything you can share from that perspective? Absolutely. So after I had my, well, when I got pregnant, I got really, really aware of what I was putting in and on my body. And I, I changed that part of my life really before I started to, you know, have all of the chronic anxiety attacks. But I think that like getting back into that and really supporting that with my diet had a huge, huge impact on changing my life. I mean, I was because of my back problems, because I couldn't, you know, walk all the time. And I certainly wasn't eating very well um, up until right before I got pregnant. Just eating, supporting your body with nutrients is huge. Um, I was prescribed so many drugs for so long and just couldn't like I it was, it was yucky. Um, and I didn't want anything to, to do with them really, because I didn't like to feel that way. So I completely quit all of my medication and I started to support myself with herbs instead. So I am obsessed. Like if you were to see my herb cabinet, my fiance makes fun of me. Anytime there's anyone has a symptom, he's like, Oh, she's going to go get her twigs and berries. So, um, definitely. I think that nature food is the best medicine. Um, so supporting your body with what it needs nutritionally is so, so important. Just drinking enough water at such a huge amount of the population is walking around dehydrated and wouldn't even realize it and don't even know, like until you've experienced a different, you don't know how, how bad you might be off. Right. Like until you're hydrated, you're not like, Oh my God, I've been dehydrated and Oh, I didn't know that I could think this clearly or sleep this well, or my skin could look so good or that, you know, I, this migraine that I've had for three years is just dehydration. It's not normal. (laughs) Yeah. Same thing with Um, food too. Sometimes we don't realize, you know, how good we can actually feel. We're so used to feeling a certain way. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's kind of what I was talking about earlier. Like we don't stop and think like, am I happy with my life? Or like, we just accept things as normal because they are normal in our reality when in, in fact, they're not meant to be normal. Um, so when we eat well and we nourish our body correctly, 
uh, that, I mean, that's just hugely transformational and that's something that you can do, you know, starting today. Um, for my physical body, I, the, my chiropractor changed my life and I manifested that completely. I like, it was right after I'd started doing my mindset journey and I got into a fender bender and I was like, it was the first like really challenging thing that had happened that it was like, you know, I was tempted to be thrown off course mentally. And I was like, no, 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 I'm going to continue my affirmations. Like this is, this is working out to serve my highest purpose. Like this is working out for my highest good. And I just continued to like repeat these positive affirmations to myself. And sure enough, that car wreck actually ended up uh, giving me $5,000 of free chiropractic care. And the next day I was driving around and I was like in so much pain, I had to pull over. And uh, I just, you know, mindlessly got on, hopped on Facebook. And the first thing I saw was an ad to a chiropractor and then they were right down the road. So I called them right then and there. And that is, I mean, I've done literally everything to heal my back. I've had a back surgery. I've done, um, I mean, literally every therapy that you can think of. I've seen other chiropractors. It's been a 15 year journey for me over that actually by this point. Um, and, and this chiropractor within, within four weeks, uh, my spine shifted completely and I could stand up straight. I was able to walk. I've I've been able to, to live a normal life again. I don't have to live in constant anxiety of like, oh my God, where's, am I going to, when's the next day that I'm going to have to call out of work because I can't walk? Or when am I going to have to, you know, try to find a babysitter to take care of my child because I'm incapable of taking care of my own child. And that's like one of the worst feelings I think that any mom could ever have. Um, so chiropractor is great. Holistic remedies are, are the, are the best. Um, I personally, with my own healing, uh, as far as like emotionally and energetically, um, Reiki has been a huge tool for me. I love Reiki. Uh, Reiki is energy work and it helps to balance the chakras and basically the way that the body works because we have more than one body. We've got your, your subtle body, your physical body, your energetic body, uh, your emotional body, your mental body, auric field. Um, when we experience trauma or um, or even just upset. Most of us don't process those things healthily right away. Most of us bury them down. We keep going. We find some kind of um, some coping mechanism or maybe addiction to cover it up so that we don't have to feel it as much, be that work, be that alcohol, be it drugs, be it food, be it shopping right? It can be like a whole slew of things that we use as a coping mechanism. And at the end of the day, it's not serving us because it's not allowing us to heal and it's keeping that trapped in our body. So when it's not processed, our body holds onto it and it stores it. And then it can begin to manifest as physical symptoms down the road if you hold on to it long enough. And w when you allow yourself to release that in the moment, um, you don't have to <laughs> go back and do all of this healing after the fact. So that healing, coping healthily right in the moment is, is huge and learning how to do that and learning how to honor your feelings and honor your emotions and, and sit with them and allow them to just be and to not make them mean anything about you as a human being, um, to not assign judgment to them or assign value to them, like their feelings and we feel them and sometimes we're going to have yucky feelings. So let's allow them to let them flow and then let them go. Right. So then they're not getting trapped. So for me, Reiki was going in and allowing that that stored energy, that stored pain, that stored uh, trauma to be released energetically. And that's also why I got into TRE, which is the same thing. It's just body work. So it's essentially, it's a, you go through a series of exercises and it basically triggers your brainstem to send your body into involuntary convulsions and it releases uh, stress, trauma, and and tension that's been stored by your body throughout your entire life, and it allows your nervous system to downregulate so you can return to home. Interesting. I, I hadn't heard of that modality yet, so I'm glad that um, we got to touch on it and you got to talk about it. But one of the things that really stood out that you mentioned earlier on and that's coming up, well, that came up again just in your talk right now or what you were saying right now is just, um, well, first of all, it's a long journey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've been through a long journey and I, I feel like it's it's usually always a journey, let's say. Um, you're always on a path of some sort. But what's interesting is it was a long journey, but early on you mentioned how within like five months 
you were able to, you know, once you knew the tools, once you had this awareness, once you realized that mindset is a huge, huge factor in this, you were able to speed it up and collapse time, which I find completely fascinating. And I love how, um, because when I talk with people about the non-toxic lifestyle and, and stuff, what I try to emphasize too, is that it's, it goes beyond like I'm all about, I've got the herb cabinet too and the twigs and berries and whatnot, but it, it goes even beyond that to be, to even progress on your journey and to reach a deeper level. Mindset mm -hmm. is often the key factor, right? And kind of switching that on. And just based on what you've been saying, do you have any advice in terms of, because the mindset piece can often be the hardest part, right? Like you were saying, you know, once you can actually realize, ask yourself those questions, are you happy? You know, are things going the way you want it to go? Are you feeling the, the joy you should feel in your life? Like, how does someone kind of turn that on, that, that awareness? Do you have any tips on how to trigger that before someone hits rock bottom, right? Before yeah. something really bad happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because most of us don't transform until we have to, right? Most of us have to hit that rock bottom before we say, oh my God, we have to change because change inherently is uncomfortable. And that's our ego telling us, you know, subconsciously that like, even if, even if you're in a, I'll use myself as an example. I was in a horribly toxic job where I wasn't making very much money, but I knew every single day when I walked in, I could, I could do it with my eyes closed. I knew exactly how to navigate any situation that would come at me in that job. And that was safer than going and finding another job that could, could be worse, could be way better but it could be way worse. And so your ego is that, that eight year old child that tells you like, no, 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 we're safe here. So let's stay right here because we know how to navigate this. And it's trying to keep you protected. And it can also keep you in situations that aren't serving you anymore. So personally, I, you know, I went and got a different job and it, I tripled my income and, and work for work with and for people that I love. And, um, and you know it was a great decision but the mindset just not having to hit rock bottom it takes a lot of awareness and it takes getting really clear on your why you know why do i want to make these changes um and and just sitting in stillness with yourself and radical self-honesty and saying like okay what you know starting am i happy with my life if yes then you know fine but most of us, if we're to get really honest, there's areas of our lives that we're not truly happy with or that, you know, we don't feel freedom or we don't feel joy and grace and flow. So it's just saying where, what are those places? Um, when I, when I first start working with people, I walk them through the seven integrative pillars of wellness and we'll take a long, hard look at each one and I'll have them rate their areas of like their level of happiness. And so you've got like financial, you've got health, you've got relationships, you've got your profession, you've got your spiritual development, you've got creativity and like your mental development. And so just take a look at those and say, am I truly happy in this area? And, you know, what do you think, what do I think could make me happier? And then really bringing the awareness in and saying like, okay, I am not consciously creating this. I'm just like, usually, you know, we have all these excuses and we have all of these reasons why we're the victim and so you switch from that victimhood to the empowered stance and you say, okay, look, I can be a conscious creator of my reality. I am a conscious creator. I am, a, I am creating my reality. I'm going to create it consciously. I'm going to take the responsibility for the results that I've received up until this point. And that means that I can change my results moving forward. And what do I want those to look like? So you set those goals and then you shift that, that mindset to like, I can do this. I am worthy of, of, having these things a lot of us if we don't have um, physical or material fortune or you know if we're not doing well financially then a lot of it will boil down to worth issues um or or just um having fear of receiving and what that might mean so it's you know having the having the mindset around it of like where you you're saying this is what I want and I'm calling it in and I'm so grateful that I have it and then being aware of what comes up around it and so that you can do the work around that instead of just like doing the spiritual bypassing and like just keeping the high vibes and keep going but I mean some of my favorite affirmations are like my divine I'm, all of my wants and needs are divinely supported um I'm exactly where I'm meant to be when I'm meant to be there the universe is always working for my highest and greatest good um, I am, 
I am healthy. So it's, it's figuring out your why, like, why do you want these things, right? Because that's, what's going to keep you motivated when the change gets hard, because inherently it will, right? Once you, you know, you might do really well for a week and then you're like, oh man, this is hard. Yeah. Your body's going to tell you like, this is challenging. We're doing something different. Um, you know, you could just go back and that would be easier and it would be, and you wouldn't get the results that you wanted. So you just have to keep the why in mind, um, like health, you know, I find that hitting any kind of goal with, with weight loss is always easier when I hold health as my why instead of fat reduction, right? So like my why I am, I'm going to choose foods that support my body. I'm going to choose a, you know, a clean diet and lots of water because I love my body and because it's my friends and because it supports me. And this is the vehicle through which I experience my life. And, and because I want to experience life longer so that I can be around for my child and have energy for him. Um, so it's just having the why in mind and keeping that your focus and then just telling yourself like, I can do this and making the conscious decision because you have the power to be, do and have anything you want. It's just finding that power within yourself and, and using it to rise up and, and to make the changes. Yeah, for sure. I love that you brought in the whole idea of the why. I love that you brought in the idea too of the self-worth. You have to feel mm -hmm. worthy enough to make these changes. And, and you just, you said the word briefly, but I want to dig deeper on that in terms of, um, I think it's the part where you were making, maybe talking about how, you know, sometimes you can make progress, but you know, you kind of fall back a little bit and you have to remember your why, because these changes, what you're doing are different. And I want to talk a bit about being different, right? Yeah. Because let's, let's go deeper on being different, right? Because whether you're talking about, you know, getting healthier and making these alternative changes or, or doing things like Reiki and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, some people might kind of look at that kind of, you know, with, <laughs> they might give mm -hmm. you a weird look or whatnot. Yeah. And, you know, some of these concepts are maybe less, um, they've become less, they're less mainstream than, than more conventional routes. So how do you deal and get comfortable with, with being different? Cause that in its own way could be an obstacle, the fear of, you know, being different. Yeah. Yeah. Totally, totally. Well, I've been different my whole life, so I've had lots of practice. <laughs> but I, I mean, definitely, I, get, I hear about it all the time with my friends. But here's the thing. In order, to, in order to have something you've never had before, you have to be someone you've never been. You have to do something that you've never done. Nothing changes if nothing changes. So you have to choose to do something different to be someone different than you've been before even if it's just compared to your past self you have to be someone different in order to have a different version of your reality and you know in the holistic lifestyle um, people choosing greener lifestyles i think that is largely different than mainstream society you know I mean, like when i'm checking out at a grocery store when i look at the items that are on on the the conveyor belt they're different than everyone else is in there and I'm experiencing a different level of health than most people. So it's, it's not being afraid of being different and it's not letting afraid of uh, your light shining onto other people because maybe you can inspire other people to be different, but it's okay with being different. Like when you are different, you have a different result. You have a different reality. Like, yes, I get made fun of by some people for my twigs and berries in my cabinet. And I don't remember the last time I had to take antibiotics. I don't remember the last time I had to go to a doctor. I experience a different level of health than most people because I live my lifestyle differently. I experienced a massive transformation in my financial reality because I think of and view money differently and because I changed how I viewed and believed in money. Um, you know, I lost, I've lost almost 60 pounds because I decided to eat differently. And yeah, it's hard sometimes and I'm not God. So there are days that I'm going to have the Mexican food and I'm going to have a margarita and it's going to be okay. The world is going to continue spinning. It's just saying, okay, this action has a consequence. Am I cool with the consequence? You know, like I'm not going to make it mean something about myself because I said, yeah, I'm going to have Mexican food today. Because when we create all of this stress around around making the change. That's something that like we really, really, really have to do. And it's from this, this place of strain and pressure. That's not coming from a place of self-love. 
And that is when change is not sustainable. So when change comes from, from, I love myself, I love my body, so I am going to, to be kind to it. Here's something different. How many of us talk to our bodies in awful ways or talk about our bodies in awful ways? So something that I like to do, an exercise that I like to do to kind of step out of my body and sort of like check my head around, like check my mindset around my body is I will imagine myself stepping out of my body and looking at it as if I was sitting across from my best friend. And I'll run through the thoughts that I have about my body. And then I was like, would I say that about my best friend? Would I, would I say that to my best friend's face? And if I did, would that best friend still be my best friend? You know, some of, most of us, probably not. So that's just like, you know, one of the things that you can do differently is to talk to your body with love, to treat your body with love and not, you know, oh, you know, I hate you and I want you to fit in these jeans or, um, you know, I, I, I want to look like this or I want to look like that. Like, what about I love myself and I deserve to feel as amazing as I possibly can. So I'm going to make different choices so that I feel radiant so that I feel full of health, so that I feel, uh, you know, joy, so that I can step away from something other than stress and pressure and anxiety and, and uh, lethargy and, and fatigue and bloat and, you know, all of these things that most people feel and step into a different reality where I get to, to radiate health and happiness and love. Yeah, absolutely. Um... I love the the measure when you talk about, you know, would you say that to your best friend? You know, that's yeah. that's such an, a powerful way to, yeah, evaluate your own self-speak and, and how you're talking to yourself. That's so, that's so powerful. Um, yeah. Let's just talk about being different, even in terms of when it comes to your family, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, you're a mama. Um, you have a significant other in terms of being different you know it's one thing to be different than everyone else but when it comes to um you know what what happens when people hesitate maybe to to make changes because of the the reaction of being maybe different from the same people in the household what are are your tips and thoughts from that perspective <laughs> my my tips there lord because i i tried my fiance and i have different lifestyles as far as like how we treat our bodies <laughs> Um, and I tried all the different ways to, to try to get him to change and it just caused tension. So at the end of the day, all I can do is be a loving example and, and lead in that way. And some of the things that I've done have caught on and with much less stress than they did when I was trying to force him into things, you know? So I think that because the lifestyle that you and I lead are probably pretty different than most people's, we just A, have to be okay with being different and then B, hope that people see that difference and they want to know what it is that we're doing and we can share with the people that really do want to know and we're not going around forcing it down people's throats because that's you know there's there's mindfulness and there's awareness and there's like sharing what you know and then there's being forceful and I don't think that anyone that enters into a, a place of transformation or a change from um, feeling pressure or force like I said I don't think that's sustainable so I think just leading leading by example. And I, you know, I've had lots of clients come to me this way because they're like, you're different. And, you know, you, you handle situations differently. You experience emotions differently. Like you're, you're happy <laughs> uh, more often than, than not. And more than most people, what's different about you. And I'm like, well, these tools and I teach them if you want to learn. Yeah. You just, you just have to lead by example. A lot of times we're afraid of our differences, but like you just said, people can be attracted to your differences mm -hmm. and that's what draws people towards you. So, you know, we don't think about it necessarily so positively, but a lot of times we should maybe celebrate what makes us different too and not uh, dim our light when it comes to, to the things totally. we do that are different. Totally, especially if like we are, when you do the work to do the healing, to to have the supported body and the health to to emotionally and mentally and physically feel great you are different <laughs> you are going to be very different from the rest of society because most of society does not feel good and they are just going through life coping to try to numb the fact that they don't feel good 
So yeah, when you, when you do the healing and you do the work that that's different, right? Choosing to confront your demons head on and to grow and to heal. That's different. And, and you're, you're going to have a different result. You know, you're going to be different from society and you're going to be happy and healthy and empowered and, you know, living that life that you've always dreamed of, but you can have it. It is 110% available. You can be, do, and have anything that you want. You have to want it bad enough, make the decision, keep that why in mind, and give it hell, <laughs> you know, just do the healing. Yeah, for sure. I just want to go back and I'm, I'm kind of bringing the conversation back to stuff we were talking about earlier. Um, I want to get back a bit, back to the emotions. So I, I, I kind of got you to talk a bit about more, you know, what you did in terms of your physical healing. We did talk a bit about the the emotional healing, but I think one of the things, and I'm just talking personally right now, and I, I would think other people might experience that too, but when I started on my non-toxic lifestyle journey um, and my more healthier journey, I was really focused more on the physical um, aspect of it, and I kind of ignored the the emotional aspect of, of the healing and even the trauma. It doesn't even have to be trauma, like just any level of negative emotion, even mm -hmm. if we don't think it's significant, it gets held in our bodies mm -hmm. somehow and it manifests. Um, so I, I don't know what are your thoughts in terms of, you know, people holding back their emotions and what are some of the impacts? I mean, obviously, you know, not releasing any kind of negative toxic emotion um, will lead to unhappiness, but just from your experience, it, what else, like what other reasons would we want to focus on, you know, detoxifying negative emotions? Well, I know my, my part of the big change in my life was when I realized that I was an empath and that I was feeling other people's feelings and that I didn't have to. <laughs> uh, now, not everyone is an empath. Basically, I think that learning how to nonviolently communicate our needs and our, our, expected I don't I don't like expectations I prefer to set intentions and hold intention instead of have expectations because I think expectation leads to disappointment and I think that most of the time when we're experiencing these negative emotions I try not to look at emotions as negative like they, they it's it's not good or bad it's just an emotion uh it doesn't mean anything about you as a human being you know you're you're experiencing sadness you're experiencing um you know anger you're experiencing these things and um, I think the first time we talked, I said, I brought up, I don't like to say like, I'm fat because I am not fat. I am not brown hair. I have brown hair. I have fat. I have sadness. I have anger. I have these emotions, but I am not them. I am not sadness. So instead of like, I'm sad, I will try to say, I'm experiencing this. And, you know, sometimes there's a very clear reason, but I try not to create one because we're logical humans. So just because we experience an emotion, we think that there has to be a reason. And for a portion of society, that's not true. You just naturally have energy, like that emotional energy running through your body. And whenever you try to pinpoint the reason, sometimes we create something that didn't exist. Instead of just honoring the feeling and saying, I'm in an emotional low right now. And, you know, then we'll try to force ourselves into doing things that we don't want to do because we're in a low, but when we weren't in a low, we said we were going to do it. Um, and, and then you kind of keep yourself in that low and that, that low will last longer. So I think just honoring how you feel and nonviolently communicating it and in the moment saying, you know, okay, this is the feeling that I have. It's not going to be here forever. What does my body need? What do I need in this moment? And I, I told, okay, so we're going to talk on human design just for a second. Whenever I talk to my emotional authorities, um, which are the opposite of empaths, I will have them like set an alarm on their phone and check in with themselves and their emotions throughout the day. And if they're between a one and a three, like, great, all you do is self-care. Take a bath, take a nap, read a book. Like, don't go spend time with other people. Just take care of you and ask your body, what does it need? And you're not going to judge yourself for how you feel because you'll be stuck that way longer, right? It's just an emotion and it's going to go away. You're gonna feel a different emotion again. Um, if you're between a, a, a four and a seven, that's the time to make decisions because you're in a nice emotional neutral and that is the perfect time to make a decision. 
And then if you're between a seven and a 10 and you're in an emotional high, then that's the time to take the action on the decisions that you've made from the emotionally neutral place. And sometimes this means you have to wait before you're like making decisions on things. And that's okay. That's a strategy for you to move through life with least resistance and to not be ruled by your emotions, which a lot of people can feel ruled by their emotions. But it's again saying that this is just an emotion. It doesn't mean anything about me. And I can just nurture myself and give my body what it needs and, and create space for myself and hold a safe space for myself to experience these emotions. I can nonviolently communicate them and communicate my needs with other people so that I'm getting supported. And then the lows don't last as long or they don't get as deep. And then for the people who feel other people's emotions, just knowing that you are a mirror, not a sponge. Just because someone else is feeling something, A, doesn't mean it's anything about you. Doesn't mean it's your fault. You're not the reason that they're in a low. And you don't have to take on their emotions. You can lovingly say, return to cinder. This isn't mine. And I don't have to pick it up. I can still have a great day just because someone around me isn't. And, you know, maybe that's turning to that person and saying, how can I support you? I think it's really important not to say what's wrong because we're telling that person subconsciously that there's something wrong with them for feeling an emotion. So I try to say, how can I support you? What are you feeling right now? Hey, I noticed that you are feeling a little, you know, maybe you're experiencing a low. Is there anything I can do to help? What do you want to talk about it? Do you want to be left alone? How can I support you? And that way you give them the power to say, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I need. Instead, you don't try to fix everything for them or, you know, take on their experiences as your own because it's not, and that's not healthy. That is so toxic. And I did it for so, so long where I thought that everyone else's emotions were either my fault or I would just feel them too. And I didn't understand where all these feelings were coming from and I didn't know what to do with them. So, you know, led to lots of unhealthy coping mechanisms and just learning that I can say, wait, what am I feeling right now? Is this mine? No, it's not. Return to cinder and I will cut cords energetically and say like, okay, I'm going to have a great day. And sometimes that means just leaving a person alone, but I will just, you know, first say, is there anything I can do to support you? Cause I sense that you're in a low. No, nothing I can do to support you. Okay, great. I'm going to leave you alone if that's what you want. And I'm going to go have a great day. And and it really gets to be that easy, but just not fearing emotions. A lot of times people have so much fear around emotions, but at the end of the day, they don't mean anything about you as a human and you're a human. So you are for sure going to feel them just as every other human on the planet is too. But I, I love what you just touched on in terms of you of, you know, you are not your emotion. You are not your brown hair. Like you were mm-hmm. saying, right. We tend, these are just, again, just small things that we do just either we're, I don't know if we're conditioned to do it or just everyone else does it, or it's just mm-hmm. part of the society, you know, we live in now, but just those, yeah, those societal things. conditioning. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And I love when you talked about setting um, intentions versus expectations. When you said that, that's something that totally resonated me. That makes so, so much sense. Do you know, one thing I'm curious about actually, just because I, I'm an empath also, mm-hmm. we hear all about empaths all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're not an empath, what are you? What are the other, you know, the other categories, for lack of a better word, that, that people fall in? So in human design, pretty much you're an empath or you're an emotional authority or you have a defined emotional center. And so what that means is that you you experience that that energy coursing through your body at all times. It's yours. You're not feeling other people's. I have a lot of people that I work with that are like, I'm an empath. And then I look at their chart and I'm like, no, you're not. And they're like, oh, but I'm feeling this feeling around that person. And I'm like, yeah, that's just true. You're feeling general empathy. Like you're feeling, you know, you generally care about someone, but those emotions are your own. They're not other people's that you're picking up on. Um, and then you have the empaths that do feel what other people are feeling. Definitely. But yeah, uh, so if you're, if you're defined emotionally, then chances are you're an emotional authority, which means that your emotions are actually your superpower And when you leverage them and understand them and give them the space just to be and don't, you know, have them, you know, create meaning around them or judgment around them. And then you, you get to where you can make the decisions between that, you know, from that emotional neutral place, that's your superpower because that's when you're going to be making decisions that are correct for you. And that's when you're going to be able to move through life with least resistance. And as an emotional, as a, as an empath, you'll probably find that inconsistency is 
common in your life. A lot of empaths will um, have feast or famine, a lot of um, highs and lows financially, highs and lows emotionally, and they'll subconsciously seek out relationships or, or people or situations that will keep them in inconsistent uh, patterns because that's what they're used to because they don't have that energy naturally in their body and they pick up from other people's. So pretty interesting when you take a look at it. I feel like we've covered so many different things. Mm -hmm. um during this call um so i'm just thinking i know there are a few things that stand out but i'll let you decide maybe what would be some of the 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 key takeaways let's just say or what would be you know because we've covered so much what would be a good starting point for people who want to make um positive changes i know we've talked about um obviously asking yourself the question about how you feel um you know the whole awareness is there maybe something else be something else what would be like maybe the next small step that someone could take once they've realized that okay i'm not happy or i could feel you know more joy what would be maybe the next small step that someone could could start actioning uh, i think getting clear on what you want getting really really clear on what you want and asking yourself i like to do an exercise with my clients first which is like okay write down your dream life um 10 years from now so like really tap into that and what would that look like? What would you spend your day doing, wearing, you know, who would be around you? So just get really clear on what you want and then take it a step further and ask yourself, what emotions would you be feeling during that day, during living your dream life? What would, what are the emotional responses that you get from that? And then say, okay, what can I do today to create those emotions? What, what actions can I take right now that are going to have those emotions, those feelings show up in my life right now? Um, so you're shifting that vibration into a higher frequency. You're, you're starting to create from a, a higher vibrational frequency, um, you know, loving yourself and knowing that you are able to create anything that you want and that you're beautiful and, and the power and presence of God and that you're worthy of anything that you set your mind to and that you can have it. Um, you just, you have to make the decision. You have the awareness to see where you can make the changes and you have your why and you hold on to it. And then you just throw yourself into it and know that you can do it, that you are not a victim of circumstance, that you are an empowered being that is, I mean, you're a living self-aware human being on a ball hurtling through outer space. Like the fact that you're here is a, an insane miracle. So, you know, your life is a gift and you get to make it anything you want it to be. So seize the day and do it, you know, why not? Your life is too short to not spend it happy and full of joy. So just figure out exactly what it is that you want and, and go for it because you can do it. You can have it. And then when things get hard, they're going to get hard and that's okay. That is normal. One of the affirmations that I love is I can do hard things. I can do hard things. Um, so just continue to hold that why and know that you're worth all of the joy and all of the love and all of the health and all of the happiness in the world and use that to guide your decision making. I love that. I love the whole aspect too of how you take, you know, your clients through, um, you know, dreaming what their, their life looks like and, and stuff. I all about, you know, designing the lifestyle of your dreams or the life of your dreams, whatever level you want to, you want to play on. But yeah, that's what happens when you, you fall into the rat race or your everyday life. Sometimes it's hard to even picture where you want to go. And even sometimes that might make it harder to, to hold on to your why or to, you know, to keep your mindset strong because you kind of don't know where you're going, but if you can mm -hmm. kind of, you know, think of where you want to go. Um, that's another great, another great way to keep your, yourself on the, on the right track. And to get Definitely. There most people don't know what they want and they know what they don't want and what we focus on expands. So when we spend our days focusing on the things that we don't want, guess what we're getting more of? What we don't want. Whereas when you get really clear about what you do want, uh, you're able to start to create that and, and start to call more of that in and manifest that kind of thing into your life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to take the last few minutes we have um, to give you an opportunity to talk um, a bit about what you do. So let us know people who are listening, watching, who are really connecting with you. Um, what are some of the things you're either working on or the programs you have going? How can they get in touch with you after? How can they reconnect? Yeah, I am on Instagram at easywonderfullife. 
Uh, my website is easywonderfullife.com. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, my name is spelled weird. My parents went really rogue with the spelling. It's M-E-R-I-D-Y-T-H. And then my last name is Driscoll, D-R-I-S-K-I-L-L. Um, you know, reach out and send me a message, connect with me there, um, or my business page on Facebook, Easy Wonderful, uh, Easy Wonderful Life. Um, and then a few of the things I'm working on right now, I'm really, uh, obviously took some time to, to think about how to pivot with coronavirus. Um, cause at first it didn't feel good to talk about selling a program <laughs> when the world is turned upside down. Um, but right now I'm really, I'm focusing on, on, I do Reiki. I do my Reiki sessions and I do those, um, long distance and in person, not right now, but um, typically in person and long distance. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, I'm writing a book. I'm almost finished with it. It's an anxiety book. Um, I'm finishing up a, a little journal on uh, money mindset. Um, I will have a money mindset, heal your relationship with money. That's going to be coming out soon. Um, but a lot of the one-on-one work do, I do is uh, anxiety-based and then human design. So all of these things are are ways that I like to serve people and support people. And you can find more about all of that stuff on my website. That's awesome. You are such a fascinating person. I am so happy we crossed paths virtually. Thank you. Virtually. But uh, thank you so much for being here. It was a thank pleasure. Thank you.